What is good Tesla family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I'm going to be talking about the one and only Tesla stock and what you should be looking after for the future. I'm also going to break down what's going on with the overall market, how this may affect Tesla, and what the news data and technicals are telling us right now. I'm also going to break down some very important information involving Kathy Wood and what she just did with her Tesla shares and also what the shorts are doing to Tesla right now. Now, before I break anything down about all of this information, before I get into any more details, I do have to mention a couple of things things before starting. Firstly, I'm not a financial planner. Make sure you take none of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire Tesla community as a whole. And the last things, if you guys can, please check out the Mumu link down below in its description. If you sign up for Mumu, the link down below, and deposit $100 into the account, you're guaranteed 7 free stocks, and 5 out of those 7 free stocks could be a free Tesla share. It's a limited time offer. The offer ends in just seven days. Check it out before they run out. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. When it comes to Tesla, Tesla closed down about 0.94% for the day. I predicted in my previous video that Tesla would end up retesting this $188 level of support, the zone around there. And Tesla could actually break below it and start filling this gap, but it might actually hold it as well. And if that happened, the Tesla would close very close to 190. Now that is what ended up happening. And I also told you guys that if this happened, we'd most likely see Tesla eventually still fill the gap later anyways. And I still stand by that. So I do see some downside for Tesla, especially after the bearish news that just came out. I will talk about that in a couple of minutes though. But I want to talk about something else that happened in the very beginning of the day. I told everyone that Tesla, not just Tesla, but the whole market would likely see a bit of a sell-off during the very early hours, then get a bit of a bounce. And then I told you guys we probably wouldn't close that high, though, because we might slow down as well because of the weakness in the markets. And we could see SPY close around like 393 or so. But we ended up actually pushing up a little bit higher because of the fact that the market makers propped the markets up again to close above max pain. So this still does play out. There's lots of manipulation in the markets, and they continue to try to squeeze shorts to make as much money as they can. That is the job of the market makers. But the real question is, why did the market sell off kind of hard in the very beginning of the day? This did affect Tesla too. And I want to start off with what one of the Fed presidents known as Bullard just said. He basically came out and gave another speech today, and he actually said that he believes the Fed has more uh, rate hikes to come. He actually raised his overall projection of the rate hikes, and this actually caused the market to uh, sell off just a bit. Now, Bullard has a tendency of being quite hawkish every now and then. He's one of the most hawkish members of the Federal Reserve, or at least one of the presidents, so to speak. And for him to say this, I don't necessarily think he's wrong to say that because of the fact that the Fed gave us the data and they told us they're most likely going to continue raising rates going into the May meeting. This means that we could have our final rate hike in May, but there is still more work to be done. However, the reason why Jerome Powell said that the Fed might actually pause after the May meeting, maybe starting in like June, is because of the fact that the Fed will not have to continue raising rates as aggressively to tighten financial conditions. He's telling us that now we should expect tightening in the real estate sector, tightening in the credit markets, and this in turn will help to bring down inflation. So the Fed has essentially done their job at this part, and they're getting very close to a pause. Even Bullard could actually agree with that, but once again, he is still very hawkish at the same time. He also mentioned the fact that inflation is still very strong, it's stronger than expected, and the Fed has a lot of work they still have to do in his opinion. And I do agree with him that the Fed has to continue raising rates, maybe a little bit more but even if they pause from here, I mean, it wouldn't necessarily be the end of the world, but that's going to depend very heavily on the banking situation and other factors. Now, the last thing I want to say about Bullard is he basically mentioned that uh, the Fed has been printing money, basically. They increased their balance sheet once again. And when doing this, this actually allowed for the banks to be able to handle more rate hikes. That's why he believes it's essential for the Fed to continue raising rates. Now, some people are saying the Fed needs to pause and this and that. As of right now, the Fed is telling us they're not going to be pausing. So he is correct about the Fed continuing to raise rates. But one other thing that's very important was the market was getting ready for rate cuts this year. Now, this could be adjusted, but as of right now, the Fed's projections say the Fed is not going to be cutting until 2024. 
That's once again very important because any you know rally in the market off the hope that the Fed is about to cut or they're getting very close to cutting does not make any sense because the data does not back that up as of right now. Now, other stocks out there like Apple did actually manage to pump a little bit after, excuse me, some bullish news. Uh, we did see Apple uh, planning on making more investments into like theater, theatrical re releases. And also we saw them being accepted by Lucid and just other factors like that. So this helped Apple prop up a little bit. This also helped the market hold up a little bit better. But we did see other sectors in the tech industries, such as like Amazon, and Tesla, and even NVIDIA continuing to slide or continuing to show some relative weakness. And I believe this will actually continue as the days go on. Now, when it comes to the market, I just want to note that we had about a million puts expiring today, and that's part of why the market did actually rally at the end. I wasn't as confident about this actually happening because of the fact that we were hit with some very bearish news. And from a fundamental standpoint for the markets, right now, there's not much news really helping out the bulls. There's not really too much to say that's very bullish. Right now, inflation is still higher than what the Fed wants it to be. The Fed is still going to be tightening. The banks are starting to struggle. There was even news about Deutsche Bank continuing to struggle as well. We actually saw them down, I think, over like 11% or something even higher than that. But even Deutsche Bank is now struggling. So the banks are just continuing to struggle and struggle and struggle after their investments in mortgage-backed securities and also the short-term uh, treasuries. It's affecting them big time. The rate hikes are going to continue to affect them. And... The true effects take time. Now, for next week, I want to inform everyone that we have um, some housing data coming out around Tuesday of next week, but the bigger days are going to be on Thursday and Friday of next week because we have initial jobless claims and also some GDP numbers coming out that will be very important. This is super important for the economy right now because we want to see a decent GDP. But at the same time, if GDP is too high, the market could even freak off of that because we want there to be a slowdown in the economy right now. If there's too much growth, this could actually help inflation remain high and even more sticky. So it's very mixed. That's the very crazy thing about Thursday. We are getting very close to the end of the quarter. And when this happens, we tend to see uh, more and more data come out. We also have uh, PCE coming out on Friday. This is going to be very important too, so just be ready for all of this. But now, without further ado, let's talk about Tesla. I mentioned this yesterday. A Tesla got hacked by some winning hackers, and they basically managed to hack a Model 3, and this did lead to lots of concerns for Tesla's cybersecurity system. Now, the thing about this is, I did mention this yesterday once again, but I actually talked about this when this barely came out. And this actually started spreading a lot more early in the morning. This is part of why Tesla underperformed. But another big reason as to why Tesla underperformed was Kathy Wood. She actually sold $27 million worth of Tesla to buy the dip on Coinbase. And I believe this article just came out uh, very late today. So this hasn't fully affected Tesla just yet, or at least the reaction that's going to come from any investors during a big announcement like this. So as the news spreads, I believe this might spread more during the weekend. This could be very negative for Tesla for the time being. And also, why would Kathy would be selling a lot of Tesla shares? Well, you have to remember that it's not because she doesn't believe in the company. It's not really that. It's because... She could be expecting Tesla to pull back a bit. Maybe she thinks the Coinbase is going to make a better recovery after how oversold it became after the big drop. Also, she could be trying to reposition. So big fund managers, they don't always just hold one stock forever. They constantly move money back and forth based off performing sectors, based off different stock performances and other big factors like that. So her selling $27 million worth of Tesla does not necessarily mean she's giving up on the company or Tesla has to crash super, super hard. I mean, it could actually indicate that she might think it may underperform a bit. But once again, that's not the only reason. There are a bunch of different reasons as to why. But I do believe, given the fact that I am seeing some bearish signals for Tesla, there is a chance that that did play a role in why she sold that much. Now, when it comes to Tesla, I want to note that we have a very important uh, week coming up, especially near the end of next week, going to the very start of the week after, because we're approaching April. And April is going to mark the end of Q4. 
uh, one. That's important because Tesla is going to be giving us their deliveries reports. I'm going to actually make a video about this tomorrow. This is very, very important news because look, Tesla looks bearish for the time being. The share price may continue to slide. It's starting to show some signs of weakness and all of this stuff is going on. But we could see a temporary reversal if Tesla ends up beating expectations and they absolutely kill it when it comes to deliveries. I will give you guys more details about this tomorrow, but I just want to note one thing that's not that great is the fact that inventory levels are starting to go up a little bit on Tesla. And that's ever since I believe the Model 3 was no longer qualifying for, qualifying for the EV tax credit, especially starting next week. So now that this is happening... I want to actually watch this very carefully and really hope that we see more buyers step in. When we started to see the inventories rise like crazy, Tesla adjusted their prices to actually incentivize a lot more demand. The same thing could happen if this does start to spike way too much, but it's not really too high at the same time. We actually saw it reach this level around the very beginning of March before getting bought up by many, many buyers out there all over the USA. So I'm hoping we see a continuation of this. I want to see high demand for Teslas. I want a strong deliveries report. That will help the share price at least temporar temporarily, excuse me, if we continue to see improvement. Now, one thing that's not that good for Tesla, though, is the fact that the short interest is starting to pile up again. I only have the data updated for the last like two days. So this is as of like on Wednesday. Tesla's short interest actually increased big time. And we saw 26.7 million Tesla shares shorted in just one day. I also want to note that when Tesla was starting to like outperform the market, we saw this big decrease in the short interest. We saw we saw way less Tesla shares being shorted during this time frame right here compared to these other periods when Tesla was selling off very hard and we saw way more shorting on a day to day basis. But right here, we could see it's slowly creeping up again. The shorts are coming in again, and that's part of why Tesla is also underperforming right now. On top of this, I want to note that shorts tend to be very, very aggressive sometimes. And if they do start shorting this thing very, very hard, it could lead to more and more aggressive downside. So be prepared just in case we see this thing just shoot up very hard. It may even continue to uptrend once we get the data for today. Be very careful because shorts could be once again very relentless. Now, what does all of this mean for the share price for you know Tesla and the overall market? I just want to note something very interesting, and that is when you look at the daily on SPY, you bring up the 50 and 200 moving averages. If you look at the last six days, we're basically sandwiched between these two moving averages. SPY basically comes all the way down to the 200 moving average. We, we basically touch it, then we get a nice bounce, then we test the 50 moving average, then we come right back down. We did temporarily break the 50 moving average during the FOMC meeting when the market ended up rallying off a couple of Jerome Powell's words, but then it ended up selling off right after coming right back. But we've basically been stuck between these two moving averages for the past six days going back and forth and back and forth. In my opinion, this is going to dictate which way the market ends up going. If the market somehow, this is just a hypothetical situation, okay? If the market somehow sees news that the Fed is going to print a trillion dollars and something like really, really bullish happens, or if we get some sort of bullish catalyst, such as the fact that uh, the, the, the Fed announces more bailout money for the banks, or I, I don't know, something like that happens, just hypothetically. What's going to happen is if the market starts to rally, if you want to turn bullish in this market, you need to see us break the 50 moving average. We haven't been able to break this thing in a clean manner for the past six days. And then we'd have to break above 400. And if we could actually break and hold 400, then SPY could actually fly to about 402. Break that, then 410 becomes possible. But right now, we're actually downtrending overall. And we've been touching, we're coming very close to the 200 moving average many times. So we're getting closer and closer to like this 390 level. You must also remember that the high during FOMC was 402. Yesterday, the high was 399, and then today, the high was about 395, but we did spend a, a large chunk of the day kind of in the red. What this tells me is the market is actually showing lots of signs of weakening, and if we start to see the tech sector slow down big time, especially because we're getting some bearish signals for NVIDIA and also for Amazon, if the market slows down, there's a good chance we're going to likely retest the 200 moving average, and we're most likely going to see this end up breaking to the downside. The odds do favor that based off fundamentals and also how its stocks are performing right now. 
Once again, remember the market could be very irrational sometimes, even though there's not really much backing, you know, the, mar the market's moves right now fundamentally. I just want to note that you should always be prepared for anything just in case. But once again, the odds, the probabilities do favor us eventually breaking to the downside, in my opinion. Now, for the VIX, I just want to note that we've been holding this 20 level very, very nicely. We did break to the upside, came down just a bit, but we did end up closing around almost 22. This tells me that the VIX is tr trying to base around here, and this thing might try to break out very, very soon. Why? Because the market might see some downside. That is still very possible. Now, regardless of what SPY and QQQ do, I just want to note that a lot of uh, uh, stocks have a very individualistic aspect to them because they're now starting to underperform relative to the markets. And it, once again, the QQQ, it barely closed green today, got a push at the end of the day. It closed around 310, which is pretty decent. But remember, we have very strong resistance between this 310 and about 313-ish area. It kind of changes on a day-to-day -day basis, but it's very close to those levels. We're most likely going to see the QQQ try to fight this. But once again, it's struggling to break above 313. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see this thing fail and start to pull back a little bit because a lot of tech stocks are starting to slow down. Another thing that's bearish for the stock market is the dollar is breaking out again. I told you all yesterday the dollar is most likely going to bounce off this 102 area and then try to get above 103. We closed above 103.12. What this means is if the dollar keeps pushing up, we're going to see a big inversion in the markets, meaning the stock market is likely going to show some signs of weakness, which in turn is going to be bearish for many stocks out there such as Tesla. On top of that, the 10-year Treasury yield, right now, it's actually continuing uh, to just hold these levels. It did drop to about 33, very close to my target, but I'm hoping it gets a bounce. And that, too, will be bearish for the stock market if it does try to bounce. For the time being, it has been coming down. Once again, I'm waiting for this thing to try to bounce a bit. Overall, it is still affecting the market's performance, at least to some degree. Microsoft ended up closing pretty nicely. It's up about 1.05% retesting this 280 area. But I want to note that it hasn't been able to break 283 just yet. So it might be in a topping process. We may be forming a double top on this. And overall, it does have a little bit more strength to it. I'm still waiting to see if it rejects or not. But finally, what is all of this telling us about the weaker stocks out there? And that is, once again, why I'm talking about these stocks as individuals. Amazon is looking weaker. Amazon rejected just as I had predicted off this 100 level. And I told you the important level to watch is around this 98 zone. I told you Amazon could close around here, maybe drop a little lower and, and then, you know, try to rebound and come very close to the 50 period moving average. Amazon did close somewhat somewhere in the red and it likely has more downside to come considering the fact that it looks like it was topping around here. The daily MACD is continuing to get tighter and tighter, and on the hourly time frame, I'm starting to see signs of it once again continuing to downtrend. On NVIDIA, I'm going to talk about this before I talk about Tesla. I, I'm seeing signs that it was trying to top around here, around this 275 area. If NVIDIA starts to slide, a lot of investors are going to be losing money, and on top of that, this could actually drag down the QQQ. It could drag down the markets, the NASDAQ, right? Even SPY can be affected by this because NVIDIA is a giant and it's actually watched by millions of people on a daily basis. So what I'm seeing is I told you all that my target on NVIDIA was about 264. I thought it would close somewhere around there. We ended up closing around 267. But you have to remember that the market pumped at the last minute of the day, the last like hour or so. Uh, it pumped pretty hard because of the fact that the market makers propped up the markets, and that's part of why NVIDIA did close a little bit higher than 264. Now, in my opinion, given this trend, we do have a wide open MACD. On the one-hour time frame, it's starting to slow down. On the daily, we actually once again look like we were in a topping process around here, given the wick and the doji that formed here. We're likely going to see this thing downtrend and retest 264 very soon. If that fails, I wouldn't be surprised to see this thing hitting 260 very soon. If that all of that happens, this could drag down the markets and also Tesla. Now, going into Tesla, before I end the video, Tesla right now is looking weak. It's looking quite weak right now. Because when you look at some data, our overall price pairs ratio, which shows us how strong it is relative to the market, was hitting this extreme level. 
And the last time it came very close to this level, we saw Tesla actually pull back a bit. What this tells me is this is actually kind of similar to an RSI becoming oversold in a way. And it tells me that Tesla is now losing some relative strength. And when this happens, we tend to see Tesla underperform. What's very important to note is SPY and QQQ managed to rally at the end of the day and close kind of green, but Tesla closed red. Tesla is not necessarily holding up nicely. So on the daily chart, we do, we do have signs of a potential topping process on Tesla. And also on the hourly time frame, I'm seeing signs of Tesla now starting to downtrend. Once again, we had kind of like a topping process around this uh, 198.5 to 200 level. And now it's starting to downtrend from there. Tesla is now trying to fight the 50 period moving average for the one hour time frame. This is very important because if Tesla breaks below it, it happens to also be breaking below the gap support right here around this 188 level. That's a very important zone. 188, I mean, it did bounce around 187, but the point I'm trying to make is we didn't actually get a strong break below 188. We did touch 187, then bounce right back and try to get right above above like 188 quite quickly so that's really the zone that's holding us up now if tesla does get a clean break below this area it is most likely going to come all the way down and fill this gap coming all the way down to like 183 or so support does exist there but on the daily chart the stronger support is going to be around this 180 level which is where the 50 period moving average is which means all right, if Tesla breaks 188 in a very strong manner, not necessarily like touching 187 and bouncing like today, I'm in a very strong break below that zone. If Tesla gets dragged down because of the news of Cathie Wood selling or even because of the overall market and also because of its relative performance and the shorts piling in and all these factors bring Tesla down, if it fails, it's most likely going to fill this gap around 183. If that fails, there's 180. And then if that doesn't hold us, then we also have this possibility of a uh, head and shoulders forming on Tesla. On the hourly time frame, this is very possible because you could see Tesla came down to 163 just a couple of weeks ago, got a nice bounce, and this is starting to resemble like a left shoulder. Then we do have a head that possibly formed when Tesla rallied to 200. The real question is, are we going to come all the way down to where the support is around 176 or so, then try to balance and form the right shoulder before coming lower, or is it going to be invalidated? As of right now, it still is valid. It is still very possible, and us filling this gap will just make it even more realistic. So I believe the odds are favoring Tesla eventually coming down very soon to fill this gap into the low 180s. All right. But if you are bullish on Tesla, if there's somehow something super unexpected that happens, you have to watch where this 200 period moving average is on the hourly, this 193 level. If we break 190, if we break 193, then, then this thing has the poten potential, excuse me, to retest 195. And if we break 195, then there's going to be the 198.5 to 200 zone. So these are some very major resistance levels. I mean, a small bounce is technically possible, but I'm not counting on it being too big. I think the odds are favoring Tesla most likely once again, coming down to fill this gap way down here. This could even be forming kind of like an inverted cup and handle where we have this cup right here and the handle is just getting ready to form and we're just going to come down, fill the gap and then continue to go from there. So I believe that's most likely going to happen. And that's basically what I have for this video. Please remain calm, cool, and collected. Do what you have to do, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Tesla to the moon, because the long-term future is still incredibly bright. And peace out.